Hello everyone, welcome back to the second video of our FortiGate 6.0 uh, Central Nats review and site-to-site -site VPN demo. My name is Evan Adams. I'm a Fortinet instructor here with Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants in Tepe, Arizona. And yeah, this is a continuation of our last video. So in our last video, we reviewed NAT on the FortiGates, and also we enabled Central NAT. So we also saw that it broke a bunch of stuff. So what do I mean by this? Well, we turned on the natting table, and because there was no central natting rules, uh, yeah, essentially no natting takes place. And when public IP addresses hit the forty gates, it really doesn't do anything. So let's take a look at it not working. So um, here's our forty gate, and as you can see, there's no central nat rules. And when we had natting on before, everything worked fine. So just to kind of demo what's going on here, I'm just going to go to Google.com. And it's it's not gonna work. And also none of our none of our servers are gonna be able to ping out, so and that's because we got no net. Yeah. So let's go ahead and fix that. So in this video, we're just gonna configure the central net like we had it before. So we're gonna just use the outgoing interface from this subnet out to the internet, and then we have an IP pool that we're using before and our server pool over here. So now, we had to take out our IP pool before turning on Central NAT, so that was one of the catches. So if you have any IP pools, and if you have any destination NAT, which were known as VIP objects, um, you're not going to be able to enable Central NAT. So we had to remove that, and uh, once again, once you enable it, starting with 6.0, um, essentially it's going to break your network, so don't do it half-heartedly. Make sure you plan it. Also, another thing I meant to mention was I kept on bringing up the default behavior was called profile NATs. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Devin, is it really profile NATs? Because NATing happens on the firewall policy. So let me clarify that real quick. So um, if we go over to our system and we go to our settings, you're going to see that the FortiGate is running in next generation firewall mode. All right? Flow-based mode next generation firewall mode profile based so what I mean by profile based application control web filtering those are going to be defined on a separate profile in that separate profile okay uh, will then be matched to a firewall policy in policy based mode uh, central net has to be turned on and that way we can actually match traffic in the matching rules of the firewall policy and that way we can go ahead and like just deny an application or a category at the very top of our firewall rules. So I just want to clear that up when I said that the default behavior for natting was profile based. I was meaning next generation firewall mode. The correct term was yes, to correct myself. It's really called profile natting and uh, or policy based natting because it's happened on the firewall policy. So anyways, enough of that. I know that was kind of confusing, but I just wanted to clear up some terminology there or confuse the heck out of you guys even more. But when I kept on referring to, to profile-based natting, I, I was talking about being in this mode right here, which is the default mode of the FortiGates. So anyways, let's go ahead and fix our firewall rules. So our very first thing that we're going to uh, fix here is our uh, outgoing WAN interface. And we're going to do that by writing the the SNAT rule. So we're going to go down to policy and objects and we now have the central SNAT table. It is blank. So let's make our first natting rule. So we're going to say, hey, you know what? If you're coming in from LAN 1, popping out the internet, WAN, and if you're coming from our local subnet, all right, see the 172.16.1, and you're trying to go to the internet, okay, let's go ahead and just use the outgoing interface addresses. All right, and as you can see here, we can have natting on such a granular level here, guys. We can do it by protocol. We can do it by destination. It gives you way more control over the traditional natting rules that we had using our default nat. So, but we're going to say OK, and now we actually have a rule. All right, so um, does it work now? I don't know. Let's take a look. So let's go to uh, Google.com. And there you go. It is now natting the way that we want it to. And we can verify this by going over to our FortiView and looking at our live session table. And you'll see our sessions built and us using the outgoing interface. What? So that one is fixed. 
Now, what about our IP pool that we had before? Well, uh, let's go ahead and go back to policy and objects. All right, and let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, IP pools. And as you can see here, we still have IP pools. And as you can see, we still have our IP pool that we had before. We just couldn't reference it when we turned on central net. And this was a block of our, <laughs> our make-believe uh, public IP addresses, right, that we're going to use for that particular subnet. So now we go into our central netting rules, okay? And we simply say create new. And now we're going to go out from our management port, which all these servers are living on, going out to WAN, all right? Our source is going to be our server subnet, okay? Our destination is all. The internet's a pretty big place. And we're going to NAT, but now we're going to NAT using a dynamic pool. What IP pool? Our, our public server pool that we already had before. And we go ahead and we say OK. All right. And now we should be able to, once we uh, click in here, to ping out to the internet like before. Oh, my word. Look at that. Pretty cool, huh? And if we quickly hurry over to our live session table, it should be doing it from the IP pool. All right. OK. And there they are. Pretty neat, huh? So there you guys go. And and the whole takeaway message here is instead of going through firewall policy after firewall policy to look at our netting, we can now go to one table to see all the netting rules. And that's really the advantage of central nets. Okay? It's really not that difficult to set up. And it's kind of nice if you have tons of firewall policies. Because the old way, you know, something can fall through the cracks. Something can be netted incorrectly and be hard to find those things. Uh, Central Net really does clear it up. And you also get the, the advantage of using policy-based application control in next generation firewall mode. So anyways, that's not really the end of our, our story here. So all right, we pretty much accomplished Central Net. But in the situation that was proposed, uh, we want to do this netting through a VPN tunnel. All right, so before I do that, though, let's go ahead and talk about DNAT, just because we haven't done it, okay? So uh, essentially, we want to create a DNAT through a VPN tunnel, but I'm going to do it through our normal way, and usually this goes to like a DMZ or something like that with some publicly facing servers, so on and so forth. But I'm going to create a outside IP address of 10.200.1. I don't know, I'm just kind of making something up here. Um, uh, I don't know, 50, <laughs> okay? And it's going to go ahead and it's going to NAT it to this server right here, all right? So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll test it from the remote PC out here. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So let's go ahead and go back into our firewall. And now we are going to create a policy and object DNAT, all right? And as you can see, there's no DNAT rules, so we're going to create a new one. And we're going to create a DNAT and virtual IP address. And this is going to say, you know, I'm just going to say example. And this is coming from interface WAN, so it's listening from the WAN port. All right. And if we knock on the door on our WAN port for this IP address, I want you to go ahead and NAT it to 172, right? Uh, two, five, six, oh, three. All right. So we now have our DNAT. All right. Now, that's great. What's the big deal? Well, all right. Let's go ahead and write the firewall rule to let it through. So here I'm going to go ahead and do the IP4. I'm going to say create new. And I'm going to call this DMZ. DMZ, Demilitarized Zone, and our incoming interface is going to be the WAN, and our outgoing interface is going to pop right out into our management, all right? Our source, well, the internet's a pretty big place, okay? Now, in theory, we should still be able to say destination server subnet, and the reason why is because, okay, uh, that VIP 
should happen automatically. So we shouldn't have to define the natting anywhere here because it's happened in the dnat table. Okay? Um, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm not afraid to fail. So, But that's how it happens on our traditional natting. So let's go ahead and say OK. Now, in theory, I should be able to, all right, ping out to this server right here using 10.200.1.50. Okay, so let's try it. So here we go. Here's my, oops, remote PC. All right, as you can see, I was dinking around here. I'm just going to open up a terminal. And you know, I haven't been on this side for a while, so let me just make sure we have internet connectivity. All right, okay, cool. So we do. Now let's ping 10.200.1.50. And as you can see, it, it found it. So to the outside world, it looks like a public IP address. From the inside, though, right, it's really the 172.25.6. What, what do we do here? Three? Now here's the challenge, okay? In the next video, we're going to go ahead and create the site-to-site -site VPN tunnel, but when it pops out of the tunnel, we're going to essentially do what we did right now, but we're going to NAT 10.10.10.10 instead of the public 10.200.1.50 through the VPN tunnel to our server farm, and we're going to do it using central NATs, and uh, honestly, I don't know if it's going to work. Stick around. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't, and I'll see you guys next time. All right? So, um, and just in review what we did, we fixed our NAT using central NAT, and uh, we also created a DNAT on the fly, and I impromptu that, by the way, just to show you kind of how it works going from the outside in. So, all right, guys, I'll shut up, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, have fun.